There were times where I found it hard to teach because she had her arms around me all the time. And there were times I get frustrated with it because I was like, I need to have my hands. I need to do my job, you know, as teaching. And she just, she just wanted love so much. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to look at Summer Wells' Sabbath teacher, Robin Lane, who had Summer in her class for several years. And we hear her speaking about what Summer was like in class. A day or two ago, I put up another video, not too many people watched it, dealing with Summer's child psychology, what did her free spirit mean, um, you know, what, what does that aspect bring to this particular case. And so this is really a episode that is holding hands with that one. So if you haven't seen that one, you should really watch it after this one. But we really do get a sense from Robin Lane of another side to Summer. And we're going to explore that in a little bit more detail in this episode. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. You can click on the light blue icon on the bottom right of your screen. Hit the notifications, like, share, leave a comment. And let's get started. So through Robin Lane, we get a totally different perspective of Summer, not from her parents, not from her family, from a sort of a third party perspective. And it's quite interesting what she says. Let's listen to it again. There were times where I found it hard to teach because she had her arms around me all the time. And there were times I get frustrated with it because I was like, I need to have my hands. I need to do my job, you know, as teaching. And she just, she just wanted love so much. And I, I treasured that. I absolutely treasured that. And uh, I'd do anything to have her arms around my neck again. I really would. I just love her so much. And she just had so much love to give. Well, I must say, Robin seems like a sweetheart. She seems like a really good person. She seems to really shine. She, she's a really attractive lady from Tennessee. But the thing that I think she highlights that is easy to miss is the sense of the little girl being clingy, obviously more clingy than all the other children. But besides that, you know, um, hanging around her, putting her arms around her so much that she was actually frustrated and not able to use her own arms to teach. And one's going to ask, what is going on there? And it's not just the account we get from Robin Lane. We also see that actually happening where Summer is wandering around the church and then sort of clambers up onto Robin and Robin is sort of holding her throughout an entire song. We, we've seen that in the in the video of the Kingsport SDA Church during a service. Wonderful little girl, five years old, full of life, a free spirit. And our church didn't want to sit still. She was so curious, you know, yeah. running around trying to figure things out and just enjoy the worship service. So that was Pastor David Ryder speaking about her lively personality. And I'm just going to repeat that. He's, he described her as a wonderful little girl, five years old, full of life a free spirit, he said, that, you know, in the church, she didn't want to sit still. She was so curious, running around, trying to figure things out. Now, I don't know if that is quite as sweet and innocent as he's describing there. In other words, you know, he, the way that he describes it and also the way that Robin describes it sort of has this sort of angelic quality to it, you know, the pastor describes her as a free spirit and Robin describes her sort of as with so, someone with so much love to give. And, you know, I can understand these people. They're obviously good people with good hearts thinking good things about summer. But we didn't get where we are now in a vacuum. In other words, summer, whatever happened to summer didn't happen in a vacuum. A lot of these things that they're highlighting well, the question is, are they relevant to what happened to Summer? You know, one person's free spirit is another person's frustration, another person's annoyance. You know, what was that free spirit like in the family setting to her brothers, to her parents, to her grandmother? Um, the also, also, the other thing is, where is the sense of, um, you know, uh, needing attention coming from? 
uh, needing the attention in the church in a general sense, but also specifically with Robin. Where is this coming from? And, you know, if we talk about her school teacher becoming frustrated because she can't use her hands to do her job, then, you know, how did it perhaps feel for Candace or for Don? Um, you know, what was summer like at home? What was going on on the home front? And before this came to light, I was speaking to a, another mom, just talking about um, things like that, someone who's, who's clingy and so on. And I said, you know, why do you think it could be that a child may be that way? Speaking as someone who didn't really know much about the case, just in a general sense, you know, her experience as a mother, and her, her answer was that she felt that it was a case that um, some was probably starved for attention. Do you agree with that, that someone would be clingy? I think any person, whether it's a child or anybody else, would be starved for attention if they didn't get a lot of attention, if they were neglected, say. The other thing that I think is important to bear in mind is, you know, was she disciplined? Was she? And I think discipline and attention kind of go hand in hand. When you pay attention to a child, you also set boundaries for them. When you don't pay attention to them, they don't have boundaries. And, you know, you may get a sense of free spiritedness about them. But I think one's got to take it further than that and say, um, if we intuit the Wells family dynamic and you imagine um, drunken parties every night starting at half past five, what was happening to Summer when this was going on? When her mother was drinking, what was happening to Summer? Was Summer getting the attention she needed? Was, was Summer being disciplined? Was she being... Uh, you know, was she allowed to become a free spirit in that situation? And I think you've also got to consider this whole thing of um, Alison Harris said that she would often want to get drunk at half past five. Isn't that when someone went missing? Now, I'm not sure whether that is related because June 15th didn't seem like a typical day. Macbeth's um, uh, participation, the whole swimming hole thing on June 15th wasn't typical. Also, summer sleeping on the milk jugs to me wasn't typical. So I think one's got to perhaps take summer's character personality into the swimming hole and say, you know, what is going on there? Was she trying to be clingy there? Was she feeling neglected there? Was she um, a free-spirited girl there? Was she curious there? Was she running around there? Was she trying to figure things out there? And then how did the people there deal with that? And perhaps did they deal with it in a way that was inappropriate? Now, there is a different interpretation to a toddly, uh, a toddly, a clingy toddler. A child can show clinginess due to separation anxiety, that they may have a fear of being away from their parents. So it could actually be um, due to being very close to their, their family member. Now, one of the ways to manage a clingy toddler is to give them a chance to express their own feelings. Do you think that was happening in the Wells household? Do you think Bear in mind, she's got three brothers as well, all older than her. Do you think she was able to express how she felt? So there could be an innocent explanation for clinginess, but there could also be, it could also be signs of stress. Um, when a toddler or a small child shows signs of being sad, clingy, or something like that, um, it could be a sign of stress. And often what is associated with that could be crying or tantrums. Um, there could be um, bad sleeping habits as well, um, tantrums, um, ni uh, nightmares, and sometimes also physical ailments. There could be headaches or just colds and things like that. Those are signs of stress. So the question is, was Summer, was Summer a sad child or was she a happier child, happy child? If she was sad... Um, did, was this clinginess this a sign of something 
something unhealthy, some dysfunction going on in the household. So one does have to wonder, is this a case of insecure attachment perhaps due to feelings of neglect or just insecurity that the home life didn't feel like a very secure place, a very safe place? So in the website um, genmindful.com, I'll put a link in the description, it refers to when children don't have secure attachments with their caregivers, they feel they can't rely on them when needed. Studies show that these babies and toddlers are actually less clingy in scary situations. Children who feel their needs are not met may experience increased anxiety and may have difficulty regulating emotions, uh, interacting with peers, understanding body signals. Other children learn strategies for achieving and holding attention, such as overcompliance, constant smiling, or disruptiveness. So just something to bear in mind i think we've also got to remember summer as a person and how that possibly played into the events of june the 15th around about 30 days ago today thank you for listening and i'll see you guys next time